Now to debate some of the big stories of the week with the Inside Utah Politics panel. This week we have State Senator Todd Weiler and State Representative Brian King. Gentlemen, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, yep. Glenn. All right, so there's this little something you probably heard of going on in Washington. This uh, impeachment is? inquiry, right? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of <laughs> I've that. I've heard about it. All right, so we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the show with another guest, but I want to dig in more with you guys. Let's talk specifically the impact on the 2020 election at first. President Trump is really running with this and using it to energize his base. Is this a help, a gift for him in 2020? It may be. It certainly has been a gift for fundraising. He just, his, his numbers have been astronomical. He just announced the last quarter he raised $125 million. That's compared to Obama raising $70 million at this, you know, eight years ago, kind of the same point of this presidency. And when Obama raised the $70 million, everybody's like, oh my gosh, it was blowing the roof off. So it certainly helped with fundraising. It may turn out to be a gift for him. I think it's too early to tell. I, I really do. It, it could go either way. All right, Brian, your thoughts? I don't think that he would have chosen this. I mean, you saw his reaction privately. It was reported when he found out about the Mueller investigation, the Mueller appointment. He went, oh my gosh, I am just screwed, basically. He was distressed, and I think he's been distressed with this, and I think the nature of how he has responded emotionally in his Twitter page over the last 10 or 15 days reflects that. So how? But, he, but he's taking lemons, and he's making lemonade out of it to the best of his ability. And I agree with Brian. I don't think he would have chosen this, but he was clear, last spring, he was clearly goading Pelosi into starting an, an, an impeachment proceedings, and now kind of she has. Let, me ask, taking a let me ask you this, though. The attention is on President Trump. Uh, we've heard Democratic candidates in the past say, if all we do is talk about Trump, we're going to lose. Yeah. So is that on the line well, for Democrats? Well, you raise a good point. The Democrats need to be talking about something other than Donald Trump. They need to get past this. For the time being, I think the people who are most distressed about this are people like uh, the, the candidates, other than Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, in the Democratic primary because they're having a hard time breaking through with any message of their own. So it hurts them. But I think that by the time you get into January and February, you're going to find that uh, this whole impeachment talk has been resolved or has at least subsided to some degree. Okay. Uh, President Trump, a series of tweets really demanding to face the accuser in this situation, the whistleblower. Uh, some are saying he's trying to intimidate this person. Is that troubling to you? Well, um, it's a little bit troubling. Certainly in a, in a criminal case, this is not a criminal proceeding, this is a political c proceeding. In a criminal case, you do have the right. So he's kind of tapping in to, to those emotions. To confront your accuser yeah, yeah, in court. In court. He's trying to tap into that, that emotion of the American electorate. But in a political case, he doesn't have that right. And, and, and this is a political process. But I do think uh, someone who is trying to take down the president from behind the scenes, I don't think that that person is going to be successful in remaining anonymous throughout this whole process. Look, th this inquiry is good in this sense. Let's get to the bottom of it. Get all the facts out. I think the reality that the telephone call took place and the substance of what happened has been admitted by Donald Trump. There are other facts that we need to get out, but I do think it's very troubling that we have this attempt made by the president and his supporters to really go after this whistleblower. And it's pretty clear. It's for the purpose of uh, going after them personally, to attack them, to uh, undermine their credibility. Now, in light of the fact that the facts that are really damaging for the president are already known and admitted by him, I can't see that it's doing anything other than trying, trying to discourage additional whistleblowers, future whistleblowers. Well, but, but, but there's a little bit more to that because Adam Schiff was tweeting out in early August word-for-word -word statements from the whistleblower complaints. And so I do think that that raises some questions. Was the whistleblower working in cahoots with Adam Schiff? Or if not, who leaked that whistleblower to complaint to Adam Schiff well, we you know know that six the weeks before it became we known? We know the letter, although it was not made public until September, the letter was submitted to Adam Schiff in August. Okay, but, but why was he tweeting out word for word things? I mean, if he received but this that, confidentially. That's a good question. Yeah. But when you take a look at the Inspector General's take on this, it appears that the whistleblower did everything by the book. Yeah. No? No, I think that's No, true. I think that's what okay. the Inspector General has said. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to uh, Senator Kamala Harris obviously one of the uh, candidates for president as well. She says President Trump's speech on Twitter is reckless, and she's calling on Twitter to um, take, suspend his account. Suspend what? his account. Is that troubling in the form of free it's, speech? It's anti-American. It's anti-First American. It's anti-First Amendment. And it's very troubling that someone, a U.S. senator who's running for president, would think that Twitter should silence the president of the United States because she doesn't like what he's saying. Should she be going down that road? I don't think that the, the nature of the allegations that the president is talking about at this point justify suspending his account. I think in some ways it would help him 
if Twitter suspended his account, because the outcry would be enormous, <laughs> and 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 they would, and they're never going to suspend that account. It's just too high profile and it's too integral and core to what President Trump is. He's going to live or die based on the quality of those statements on those Twitter things. Okay, one more issue I want to get into on this, and that is the, mo for the most part, the divide you're seeing right down party lines between Republicans and Democrats. One example I'll use is uh, Representative Schiff and Representative Stewart both reading the very same whistleblower report and coming out with completely different conclusions. Is this a party line issue? Th there's just enough in that transcript and in the complaint that if you hate Donald Trump and you decided two years ago he should be impeached, there's enough there for you to grab onto. If you defend Donald Trump and you think that you know he's making America great again, there's enough not in there to grab onto. So I, I really think there's enough there for both sides to be satisfied. There's more than enough to grab onto if you want to see him impeached. I think it's a struggle to find any justification for what he did and he admitted doing. But I do think, of course, I mean, we're more polarized than we ever have been, Glenn. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to, what, this inquiry, if it's done well, will be focused on objective facts, and it will come out as it comes out. It won't be rushed. It won't be delayed for political reasons. It will come out in due time, and they will focus on the facts. That's what I hope happens. There's no yeah. evidence yet of a quid pro quo, and that's why you're seeing the Democrats this week. They're shifting it now to an obstruction of justice uh, as a kind of a plan B for impeachment now. Well, I don't, they're going to say there is no need for a quid pro quo. Yeah. There is an obstruction of justice. I angle think politically there is a need for a quid pro quo to justify impeaching the president. Real quick, how do you see this playing out? The House impeaches and then the Senate does not? hold that up? The, the Senate needs two-thirds votes, right. so you need uh, every Democrat and a, uh, over 20 Republicans. Right now, not even two-thirds of the Democrats in the nation support impeachment, you know, much less the, the Senate's majority Republicans. So no, right now, unless one of Trump's own guys comes forward or gals and says, yes, there was a quid pro quo, the president told me this or that, short of that, there's zero chance the Senate's going to uh, is going to remove him from office. Mm -hmm. You'll see information come out that will make a big difference in terms of determining how the Senate votes. I'm going to be watching very carefully a guy like uh, Senator Romney. I mean, is he going to hear information that causes him to say, I just, assuming the House impeaches, and that's not a certainty, but it looks right now that they will impeach, goes to the Senate for the trial on conviction, are you going to see a guy like Senator Romney say, I can't not vote to convict here? In other words, are you going to see two, five, eight, mm -hmm. ten Republican senators go that way? I think it's going to take a lot, I agree with R Senator Wilder, it's going to take a lot to get to a point where you have two-thirds, 20 Republicans saying, we're going to impeach this guy. Okay. It's possible, but I don't think it's likely. We've spent most of our time on this. I want to hit on one other thing, that being the race for Salt Lake City Mayor, Utah's capital city. I had you guys on during the primary right after that, analyzing, breaking this down. Now that we're just weeks away, what have you seen develop from this race? Well, from my perspective, I think it's, I hear people talk about this whole religious angle, you know. If word gets out that loses LDS, does that hurt her or help her? There's that angle. And I, I don't know what the answer to that is. I, I think that there's an argument to be made both ways. I think if she is seen as being unfairly attacked on the basis of a religious bigotry angle, it's going to help her. Which is how she's being seen. So yeah. <laughs> I, I think Rocky's, I think the backlash from what Rocky Anderson did may help lose a little bit. Whether it's enough to help her win, I don't know. But her, key to, her path to victory is getting the vote out on the west side. I agree with mm -hmm. that. I she think needs the west side to come out big. If she can't get the west side to come out big, I think it's going to be more likely than not that you see Aaron Mendenhall as the next mayor. I agree. Okay. Uh, so the key then being just the west side as, as we move no, down No, no, no. I mean, lose, we, we got two very good, credible candidates. We do. Mm -hmm. And both Senator Weiler and I know Luz yeah. very well. We've worked with her the entire time in the legislature. And we know Aaron well, too. She's a very good candidate. The, the other question is, where does the LGBT vote go? I mean, and Jim DeBacchus has not yet done an endorsement, neither mm -hmm. has, uh, well, so, so, or do they stay home? So that's another big yeah, question. I, I actually asked Jim, where do you think your supporters are going to? And he believes that it's just going to be cut right down the middle. Does he? Yeah. 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 So it'll be interesting that, to see That wouldn't that surprise out. me. Uh, Stan Penfold was another member of the mm -hmm. LGBT community in the race. I don't think Stan has endorsed anybody yeah, at no. this point. Uh, okay, real quick, handicapping it, who wins at this point? I think you could flip a coin. Really? I really okay. do. I, I would give the edge to Aaron because uh, because she won the primary and that's kind of okay. set a precedent. All right, we are out of time, gentlemen. Great conversation. Thanks so much for being here. Always appreciate having you on. Thank Thanks, you. Glenn. Stay with us.